Hey, it's Greg from The Code Creative. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build the Markdown Previewer from FreeCodeCamp's Front End Development Libraries project section. What's going to be a bit different about this video is I'm going to show you how to build it with an awesome, lightweight, yet powerful JavaScript framework called AlpineJS. You're going to want to check out what I'm about to show you because you don't always need to use more complex frameworks like React or Angular. Being a great developer is about using the proper tool for the job. And I think you might just find AlpineJS to be a great choice for this Markdown Previewer project. This is going to be a lot of fun, so let's get going. By the way, if you're new here to the channel, we've got new videos coming all the time. So make sure you subscribe so you can take your coding skills to a higher and higher level every week. So here on the free CodeCamp website, under the Front End Development Libraries Project section, we're looking at Build a Markdown Previewer. And here we see our objective. We want to build a CodePen app that's functionally similar to this here. So they're referring to this Markdown Previewer here, which they give us an example of. Basically, we have an editor window up top, and we have a preview window here on the bottom. And the editor window is the one in which we want to type our markdown. The preview window is going to take that markdown and parse it into HTML. So if you're not familiar with Markdown, it's basically a pretty simple markup language that we can use to format text. For example, you can see here we're using this hashtag, the single hashtag, and what that results in is this h1 element, this large heading. By using a double hashtag, for example, we get a smaller heading, or an h2. And so on and so forth. There's a lot of different types of syntax we can use with Markdown to get different outputted formatting. Now the other thing about this project is that we don't only want to simply display the output at HTML here, but we also want to allow the user to come into the editor window, make changes to the markdown, and have that reflected live in the preview window. For example, on this first line in the editor window, if instead of the single hashtag, I use a double hashtag, watch what happens here to this heading, you can see it now becomes smaller. So the previewer is updating based on what I do in the editor window. Now that we know what the project's about, let's move into CodePen and see how we can do something similar using AlpineJS. Here in CodePen, you can see I have my HTML, my CSS in the center, and then I have my JavaScript on the right. Now for my CSS, I'm using SCSS as my CSS preprocessor, and I'm basically just doing that so I can use some nesting in my CSS. If you want to do the same, click this little gear icon, and then up here under CSS preprocessor, just choose SCSS. And just so you know, I'm really going to be focusing on AlpineJS in this tutorial, not so much on the CSS. As you can see, I've already brought in my CSS styles here, just so they're already ready and set to go. At the end of this video, I'll show you all my CSS settings if you want to use them. However, I am going to keep the styling pretty simple in this video. To get started, we need to import a couple things. The first thing we're going to import is a library called Marked. As they tell us in user story number four here, you don't need to parse the markdown yourself, you can import the marked library for this. So let's go back into CodePen, and in our JavaScript file here, let's click on the gear icon, and here we can search for whatever libraries we want. So let's search for marked, and here it is. Let's just click on it, and you can see it here, and let's save and close. And then the next thing we need to install is AlpineJS. So in order to do that, come over to the AlpineJS documentation. Here's the URL for that. And we're going to grab this script tag here. And you can see here they say include the following script tag in the head of your HTML page. So let's copy this. Let's go back to CodePen. And then in the HTML file, click the gear icon. And here in this box that says stuff for head, let's paste in that script tag. And let's save and close. And we should be good to go now. Now that we have everything installed and set up, I like to start out by setting up some of the visual elements on the page. So if we look back at the example, we can see that we're going to need two boxes, an editor, and a previewer box. We're going to create those now. However, we're going to have our layout just be side by side, with the editor on the left and the previewer on the right. So coming back into CodePen, in our HTML document, let's create two divs. And let's give each of those divs a class of box. And I'll expand this window a little bit so you can see some of the CSS styles that are being applied. Let's flesh out the first div a little bit. Since this div is going to be the editor box, let's give it a little heading. 
we'll make it an H2 and we'll say edit. And you see it appear here. And this editor is going to be a text area. So we'll create a text area element and we'll get rid of these attributes. We're not going to use them this time. Now for the second div, let's give that one an H2 as well. And we'll call it previewer. And this one, rather than having a text area, this is going to have another div inside because this is just going to be used to display the output at HTML. This one is going to have a class of preview. And you can see that appearing down here on the page at the moment. Now the next thing we're going to do is an important part. We're going to wrap these two divs inside of a container div. And that's going to serve two purposes, which I'll show you in a second. Let's create that div. Let's make our indentation nice. And then on that outer div, we're going to give it a class of container. So for styling purposes, what this outer div is going to do, it's going to act like the flex parent, which we're going to apply display flex to. And as you see, once we do that, we get our edit and preview boxes aligned side by side. Now, the second reason that we're using this outer div, and here's where Alpine.js starts to come into the picture, is we're going to use this outer parent div to hold our application state. And the way that we do that with Alpine.js is very simple. On that outer parent div, we're going to use a directive called xdata. So if you're not familiar with the concept of directives, directives are attributes which are used to extend the capabilities or functionality of our HTML elements. So like I said, this xdata directive is going to be used to hold some state. So we say xdata equals, and then we open up a pair of quotation marks, and inside of these quotation marks, we need to put an object. What I want to do with this object is I want to create a property and assign its value to the markdown that's going to be displayed in this edit window. So fortunately, I already have some markdown that I've created, and I'm going to paste that here into the JavaScript file, and I've assigned it to a constant, which I'm calling default text. And I'll open up this window a little bit so you can see the full markdown that I have. And for the markdown, for the starting markdown, I follow the user story from free CoCamp, user story number five, where they say when my markdown previewer first loads, the default text in the editor field should contain valid markdown that represents at least one of each of the following elements. And you can see they have an H1, an H2, a link, an inline code, code block, list item, block quote, image, and bolded text. So I have that all here in my markdown. Going back to Alpine.js though, what I can do is I can create a property in the xdata object, and I'm just going to call it markdown, and I'm going to set its value to be that default text, which is coming from this JavaScript file. Now we're not seeing it appear here yet because we're not outputting it to the screen. In order to do that, I can use another directive, and I'll use that on the text area element. This is an Alpine.js directive, and it's called xText. And that's used to set the text content of the element. So again, I'll open up a pair of quotation marks. And because this div and this text area are nested inside of this outer containing div, I have access to this state. So if I refer to markdown here, you can now see in the edit window, all of the markdown from my JavaScript file is appearing here in the edit window. So that's cool. But now my question is, how can I get this markdown to be parsed into HTML and appear in the previewer window. Well, for that, we're going to take advantage of another Alpine.js directive called XHTML, and we're also going to use that marked library, which we installed earlier. So first of all, let's use that XHTML directive. And as you might have guessed, we're going to use it on this preview div. So we do X-HTML, and if you're familiar with inner HTML, this is basically doing the same thing. So we're going to set x HTML equal to, again, we have our pair of quotation marks. And inside of these quotation marks, we can write whatever JavaScript we want to be evaluated. So what we want to do is we want to take that marked library, and there's a method which we can use called parse. And then if we invoke that method, and we pass in the markdown, which again we have access to, like so, now you can see in the previewer that this markdown from the left side is being parsed and displayed as HTML on the right side. Well, and look at that, we even have an image of my favorite girl group, the Spice Girls. So this is pretty awesome, right? Just with a few directives, xdata, xText, and xhtml, we're able to set up our edit window and our previewer window, 
The only thing, though, is that at the moment, this previewer window won't update if I make updates to the edit window. For example, on this first line where I have a single hashtag, which gives us an H1, if I change it to two hashtags, you can see on the right that this heading still remains as an H1. So we can use a different directive from Alpine.js to solve this. Instead of using xText here on this text area, instead, we're going to use a directive called xModel. And what xModel does is it allows us to use two-way data binding on our text area element. And really, with that one simple change, we should have the functionality that we need now. So if I come down here in the edit window again, and instead of using a single hashtag, I do a double hashtag, watch the previewer window, notice that the heading shrinks down to yeah, an H2 element. As another test, let me come in here, and let's try some different markdown syntax. If we use two asterisks, and then we type some text, I'll type the code creative, and then follow it up with another two asterisks, we can see that that creates bolded text. So we can see with xModel that the previewer window is updating as we update the edit window. So the way that this two-way data binding is working is that the text area's value is the value of whatever markdown is, which is that default text to start out with. But then, as soon as the user starts inputting into this text area, the value of markdown on the state gets updated. And that updated value is reflected back into the text area. And because the value of markdown is getting updated, that updated markdown is being parsed as HTML and outputted to the previewer window. So basically, all the functionality is in place now. As a little minor thing that we can do, just to make ourselves happy, let's create an H1 at the top to give our app a little title, Markdown Previewer. And we can center it by giving it a class of title. And voila, we have a Markdown Previewer. So at the moment, we're not going to be able to run this Markdown Previewer through Free Code Camp's test suite, because as they say, they really only support React, I believe, as of now. Here they say we're looking at supporting other front-end frameworks like Angular and Vue, but they're not currently supported. However, I did want to show you how to do this project with Alpine.js, because for a project like this of this size, it probably does make sense to use a smaller, more lightweight framework like Alpine.js than something like React, Angular, or Vue. Now, in the description section and the comment section down below, I'm going to put a link to my free Google Search Tips for Developers cheat sheet, which I want you to download. And it's completely free, and it's going to teach you some ways to do better Google searches when you're searching for things like algorithms and syntax and so on. If you enjoyed this video, if you feel like you got some value out of it, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel so you can get more content just like this on a weekly basis. See you next time.